Hello, this is Stephanie Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. Welcome back to our creative video series and today we're going to show you how to make a uh, zipper um, installation in a pillow with piping. It's not actually an invisible zipper, it's more like a hidden zipper. So we <laughs> kind of tuck the zipper in behind the piping and make it look really, really, really pretty. Today, the front of my pillow is going to be from a panel that we just recently got into the store. It's absolutely lovely. There are two different floral panels to the um, panel, and I have chosen one of them, and it is going to be my pillow. For the piping, I'm using the Wright's Maxi Piping. Um, you can use anything you want to for your piping. You can make your own piping. Uh, you can take and buy the piping that has the pretty rayon twisted cords or whatever it is that you would like. But today we thought we'd pick up this nice blue to get a nice highlight running oh, around our pillow. And so when we make our pillow with our piping, we're going to need a zipper foot. And so I have a zipper foot on and my needle is on the left side of my zipper foot. So that is something that you need to set up on your machine. On some machines, the zipper foot is centered and you move the needle to the left. And on some machines, the, you snap the zipper foot on the left. Whatever way you want to do it is fine. Um, it will work perfectly. We're going to start the join of our piping at the bottom center of our pillow. And the reason why we're going to do it that way is because if you start it at a corner, you'll have three corners that look different than that one you started on. So I always <laughs> like to put the join in my piping at the bottom of my pillow so that it is ready to go. At the, just hanging off the edge of our pillow at the bottom, we're going to lower our press of foot and we're going to start to sew. And you won't worry about the fact that that is loose or not attached quite the way you think it should be attached. You just ignore it and continue on. So the edge of my piping is along the edge of my pillow. Notice that I'm using lots of pins. <laughs> now you decide um, if you want if you prefer to use pins all the way through that's fine there are two steps to piping I don't use any pipe uh, pins when I'm doing step one of piping and there is a reason for that what happens is you always pin your trim on too loose and you end up chasing a bubble all the way around so I decided not to chase the bubble and just lay my edges down nice and smooth we're now snipping a few snips in our piping because we're near the corner so that I can turn and prepare the corner so it looks like I want it to look and then I can go ahead and I can sew it. Now when we go to go across our corner we do not want to pivot just once we need two pivots so we have our needle down we lift up our foot we go at a funny angle four or five stitches so in other words sew at a crooked corner I don't know why, but the crookeder you sew your corner, the better your corner looks at the end. I don't need, I'm sure it's a bad math problem, but there you go. <laughs> so we've got our edges together, and we're continuing on. And if you missed it, you're going to get to see it three more times. All right, so we sew our piping on. What happens, and the re back to why I don't pin, a lot of times people hold on so tight to their um, piping, and they can actually pucker their fabric up to their piping, those people have to pin and chase the loops. But if you can just lay your piping down against your fabric and sit, relax and sew, you don't have to pin on step one. You will need to pin on step two. And we're back to another corner. So about an inch or so before the corner, I put a few snips in my piping. I try not to cut the thread that's holding the piping stitched. And then I just line it up, and you can see how it kind of gives you these little V's as you're going around your corner. You want to make sure that the edge of your piping is set up for the next side, and you want it to look nice and square. And again, we want to just sew the eh, four or five stitches at a funny angle so that we get this nice corner. If you only pivot once, you get those pillows that have those pointy ears on them, kind of look like rabbit ears. If you pivot twice, you get a nice square looking corner. And again, I'm sure it's a bad math problem, but there you go. We're coming up on our third corner. 
So once again, we stop about an inch or so before. We snip, snip, snip. We line it up. We like the way it looks. We sew down. We do a few stitches at an angle. And then we continue around the corner. All right. If you haven't gotten it by now, this is your last corner. I know you just want to see how I do the join, but you have to wait till I get there. All right. When you're about an inch or so before the corner, you need to stop. Do your snips. And then you need to prepare it so it looks the way that you want it to look. Sew down. And then do that funny little angle, sew off the corner kind of thing. All right, we're now approaching our join where we started. And so we're going to come up, and that little funny end that was sticking out there in the beginning, we're just going to bend it so it's sticking way out. We're going to line up our edges, and there's going to be a crisscross of piping. And you're going to sew right up over the piping as if it wasn't there and out into air. And so what happens then is you end it with this little X. You can have the little end out here and you have the little end out here. Then you can cut off your piping. But advice to you, don't trim these really neatly yet. We'll do that at the end. But if you trim them really neatly now, like up kind of close, then the little blunt end likes to flip out and be in the pretty side of the pillow. Sounds uh, like you know that for <laughs> our experience. And so I, I like to have my ends flipped out like so. We're now ready for our zipper. I always check to make sure my zipper works. And I also pick a zipper that is either shorter than the pillow or longer than the pillow. I rarely pick one that's exactly the same length as the pillow. So this is a 14 inch zipper uh, going into our pillow here. We're gonna take the right side of our zipper, that's the side that has the tab, and we're going to put the right side of the zipper to the right side of our pillow. Just like always, right sides together. We wanna have it roughly evenly hanging out middle end same distance from corner as metal and same distance from corner. And that way it's fairly centered. I do not measure that ever, but I like it to be fairly um, uniform that way. We're then going to take a couple of pins and we're just going to pin maybe three or four pins, depending on how long your zipper is, just to hold the zipper where we want it. And where are you lining up the edge of the right tape? Right now, I'm just lining up the edge of the tape to the edge of the pillow, but that may change in just a moment. Okay. So we're going to take our zipper now, and we're going to open it up. And then we're going to pin the zipper in for real. We're going to tuck the teeth behind the piping. So we, if, the pipe, if the teeth are right on top of our piping, mm -hmm. we just push them a little bit to the edge so the teeth are just behind the piping. Mm. We're then going to take and we're going to stick a pin there to hold it. We're going to make sure all of the teeth of our zipper is just behind the piping. Aren't you clever? And we're just going to take it all the way across. Now when you get to that little place where you went up over it like it was a big old X, you just make sure the teeth is behind the piping. It, it'll look funny, but it'll work. And so we just take our zipper teeth tuck them behind the piping down the length there. We're now ready to sew our zipper in place. So if I think about it, I don't always think about it, but if I think about it, I take that funny end of the zipper and I just kind of tuck it over to the right so it'll be in the seam allowance and not have any danger of showing up in my um, finished you know, project on the outside for me to trim off later though I have trimmed them off in the past, and that will be just fine. We're then just going to hang on tight for a couple of stitches till it gets itself going. And then you take out your pins as you go, and you're just making sure the teeth of the zipper are tucked right behind your piping. And you want to stitch, 
I don't know, fairly close, about, uh, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from your teeth. What is very important is that you don't stitch in the teeth. One stitch in the teeth and the zipper isn't going to work. So keep those, that stitching, you know, about like so. When you get to the spot where you're going up over the big old X, just go up over the big old X. You're still sewing it in the same way. It just, for that moment there, seems a little weird. And if it seems a little weird, you are doing it right. Alright, so we then just continue on. You can see how my fingers are just kind of holding, show, making sure the teeth are where I want them, and driving. Now we're getting close to where the metal slider is, and that is the thing that scares people so much. Now the coolest thing about putting zippers in is that thing moves. So if it really scares you, <laughs> just move it out of the way. Put it back there where it's already been sewn, and no one will ever know. And again, if you think of it, put that little tab out to the side. There you go. So that side of our zipper is complete. And you can check it by making sure, of course, that it opens and closes to your satisfaction. You can see how the zipper kind of tucks itself right behind the piping. All right, so we're now ready to sew the back of our pillow. And the back of our pillow is going to be this different print. And we're going to take the back of our pillow and we are going to take it and we are going to make sure that our ends are even, like so. And stick a pin. We're going to go down here and make sure that our ends are even. And we're going to stick a pin to hold our zipper so it's evenly spaced. And then we can take our zipper and we can pin it to the edge of the pillow, like so. Okay, so once it's like that, and it's pinned, you're going to just take it back to your machine using the same setup that you've been using so far. You're going to, if you think of it, flip the little tab so it's towards the seam allowance, not towards the body of the pillow. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew. And again, you're about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the teeth. You don't want to sew in the teeth. If you sew in the teeth, the zipper isn't going to work. And again, when you get to the top end, if the middle thing scares you, just stop and unzip it. Lift up my foot here. You can even do that the whole way down if it really bothers you. Just get it started and then unzip it. It's quite nice a uh, technique um, if your piping is a little thicker than most. It's nice to be able to get that part of the pillow with the piping out of the way. When you get down to the end again, you're going to have the little tab or the top end of your zipper just again back to the um, seam side and go through like so. All right. So now when we zip up our zipper, our zipper is hiding behind our piping. It's there. It's not an invisible zipper, but can you see how the zipper kind of hides mm. behind the piping there? All right, so there are three more seams left to do, and this pillow is done. We're now going to take and we're going to pin our corners. I stick a pin in there, and I always pin from the side that I put the piping on, because that way I have a road map, so I know exactly where to sew these sides. If you pin from that side, you're flying blind. So we're going to take and we're going to pin our corners first. And then we're going to put a couple of pins 
down the sides just to kind of hold everything where we want it to be sewn. And we're going to do that for all three sides. Now, of course, once we've sewn all these three sides, we need to be able to flip our pillow right side out. So does anybody know what we need to make sure that we do before we start sewing these ooh, three sides? Oh, I do. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> someone in the audience knows. And what do we need to do? Unzip the zip. That's right. <laughs> if we don't have the zipper open at least a little bit, it's going to be an awkward turn. So make sure that when you get around to that section there, that you have left an opening for yourself to turn it around. Now, it doesn't have to be all the way open, okay? But, you know, at least halfway would be nice. That way you can <laughs> So you can get it, your hand in there. <laughs> yeah, so you can get your hand in there and get it flipped around. I have sewn myself closed many times, and I can find the tab and pull it, but I always feel like an idiot thinking, you know, you could have left that open a little bit. Now, on the side that has the zipper, that's basically that side is sewn except for the beginning and the end of our zipper pieces. So we need to, our side seams actually run around the corner. And depending on the size of the zipper, you may run around the corner three or four inches, or you may run around it just a half an inch. It doesn't matter, but you need to sew this part closed so that you know people can't peek into your pillow. And if you open it up a little bit, you can see the metal clips. So that pretty much is where you want to start your seam. So I like to kind of find my metal clips so that I don't try to sew through them. I wouldn't want to do that. And then I take it and I that's where I'm going to land. I begin. Now you notice I don't do a lot of back stitching when I make a pillow. This is one place that I do. I get do a few stitches, I do a little back stitching, and then I go ahead and I sew. Now as I come around here, I'm duplicating the stitching that I did when I made, put the piping on. With one exception, I want to think meaner thoughts. I want to get my stitching between the stitching that I did and the piping. So just a little bit closer to the piping. And how you do that is up to you. And if you do it, it won't matter. But I like to hide the first row of stitching from making the piping. So I think meaner thoughts. I push that piping right up against my zipper foot so that I can make sure that the stitching is just ever so slightly closer to the piping. That way the first row of stitching doesn't show. And then off we go. And again, just like we sewed a crooked corner when we put the piping on, we sew a crooked corner or a curvy corner when we go around our corners. Make sure you can see your underneath piece just that little bit so you're not shifting yourself a little bit from undoing your pins. Try not to pin yourself as you go. And then around we go. Again, crooked corner, going right around the bend. Sorry. Okay. We're on our last side. Come around the corner. And again, where those metal parts of your zipper are, that's about where you want to stop sewing. It's also about where you started sewing if you look at where your zipper is, too. So we just go around till we get there. We do the tiniest of back stitches. And then we are done the sewing part. Once you're done the sewing part, those little pieces that we had left hanging out there for the piping, you can trim them now okay so now I can trim them off but the weight have leaving them longer gives them a little bit of weight which keeps them out of your way and so don't trim until you are done going around other thing is I don't trim my corners I used to I used to be a very good tr corner trimmer 
And then I realized that pill forms don't actually go all the way up into the corners. And the day I didn't trim my corners, my pillow looked better. And I thought, I wonder why? And then I thought about that made sense, actually. A little bulk in your uh, corners is actually a good thing for your pillow. So we then can go in here and we can flip it right side out and push out our little corners and push out our little corners all the way around. So we have this beautiful blue piping running around our pillow. You can see how it looks so pretty. And then you can see where, because we did the stitching around the corner to where the metal parts were, it finishes off the beginning and the ends of your zippers really nicely. So you have a nice look about them, right? Mm. So they look neat. Uh, and then your zipper, again, just hides behind the piping. And since you're going to put your pillow on the couch that way, because you want your vases to be standing straight up, of course, then the zipper will be at the bottom where it doesn't show. Congratulations, you have made a pillow. <laughs>